Hey guys, we're watching Nathan Astor score 222 versus England all the way back in 2002. This is a test match innings. The way it's played is ridiculous. Now, before we get into this, let's just watch a cracking shot. Let's just get a little eye in. Oh! Did you hear that? That's a six, by the way. That's not a four. That's a six. Okay, um, so okay, so before we get into this, and we do have a lot to get into, uh, guys, welcome to the Cricket Uncensored YouTube channel. Uh, this is a home of the real cricket fan, where basically, if you're like me and you just don't get enough joy from watching just like a highlights package, and you want to learn the stories behind cricket's greatest moments, matches, innings, you've come to the right place. So anyway, let's uh, get into what the situation is before we go into the full highlights of this innings. So the situation is simple. England have uh, England have travelled to New Zealand. Uh, this is being played in Christchurch, and England are in the driver's seat. It's the fourth innings, and New Zealand are set 550 to win. It's just it's not going to happen. They've already thrown away three wickets by the time um, Astor comes in, and I believe he came in at 119 for three. Um, so it was one of those, you know. I mean, as you see. He, his innings gives a scare to like, oh my God, is he actually going to do this? Is he actually going to pull off like the miracle? Um, yeah, just he's going to pull, pull off a miracle. And obviously, ultimately, uh, they they didn't make it. But man, I mean, this innings is just, it's something else. It still to this day is the fastest double century in test match cricket history. And it's 200 came off in 153 balls. Keep in mind, this is before T20 existed. This is a back back in a time when, you know, you score 250 in a one day. You've got a, you've got a competitive total. Now, what makes this innings even crazier is the second hundred when you went between 101 and 200 came up in 39 balls. So his first wasn't, you know, I mean, it was quick, 100%. It was quick. But the second came off in 39 balls. If you take a look at the, the fastest test century, by the way, has been scored by Brendan McCollum, 54 balls. If you look at any period of 100 runs, this is the quickest 100. So once you see him get to 100, you watch the shots start coming up. And what I hate about highlights as well is you never really understand, you know, they cut out all the dot balls, etc., like that. There virtually are no dot balls when he goes from 100 to 200. Okay, so let's talk about the bowling lineup he's facing as well. You know, man, I mean, it's England in the early 2000s. They're not super strong. I mean, they've got Caddick, who obviously, like, on his day, he's a fantastic bowler. He used to, you know, I mean, he actually had a few spells against Australia during the mightiest period, mightiest period where he literally ran through them, six fours and seven fours. But the thing with Caddick, you never know. Now the funny thing is, he bowled very well in this test. He got six, I believe he got six wickets in the second innings. Um, but yeah, so you got Caddick, you got Flintoff, who you know quality bowler, but again, you know not the high stand. Hoggard was quality as well. Um, well, quality strong, but he was a good bowler. And you got Ashley Giles, who might as well not bothered. You know, <laughs> Ashley Giles is the world shit spinner to ever be in. A, you know, like a, any team. I do know, you know, it just goes to show you back in the early two thousands and really all through the. Uh, noughties will you were two thousands, um, yeah. England just couldn't pro produce a spinner to save their life. So it's not a, it's their best attack, but yeah, it's not a world class attack, you know. Now back to this, um, just to make a point about how ridiculous, how crazy, just how once in a generation this innings is. Graham Thorpe, who earlier in this match in the third innings uh, scored two hundred. And by the way, he scored it. So, did he score? Two? Yeah, he did score a double century. His double century, by the way, came up in 234 balls, which, well, I don't remember. It was either the second or the. Th it might have been the fastest century scored at that time. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But it's then, you know, Astor comes and he plays this. So, uh, what Thorpe said about this innings? Proper batsman, Thorpe, as well. I'd never seen the ball hit so cleanly. So okay, so now let's go back to the actual um, you know innings itself, and we can just kind of basically just um, and let's see what he's talking about. Okay, 
so let's go back to the start buckle in and let's kind of do this there you go on his toes he's coming he's got a bit of width there from Flintoff and he just pounced it now keep in mind at this stage England are not they don't have the slightest bit of worry they're like we're going to win in Christchurch now that swung a bit that's pure hand-eye coordination just smack that straight through the covers oh, look at that look at that just standing there there's Fleming New Zealand captain I mean it's, you know what's funny about New Zealand at this stage Fleming was their main batsman nice shot by the way and you know what man I mean like I remember just thinking like New Zealand by the way like I don't know I've never found them an interesting team to watch I still don't I think uh, Kane Williamson is brilliant but they still man they just don't have that superstar they don't have anyone that, that you know who's fun to watch with attitude and at this time Stephen Fleming good nice shot uh, whilst their premier batsman it's quite shit to have as a you know have Stephen Fleming as your you know premier batsman but anyway back to the innings nice little chip back down the ground so so far yeah crisp hitting but we definitely haven't seen the main bit yet and by the way guys I'll show you in a second on the legs that is asking to be hit um, what was it? Uh, what was I going to say? Plus a two. I forgot. Man. I'm sure I'll come back. Ready? It's a good ball, isn't it? Yep, got him on the inside edge. Carried straight through to the wicket keeper. Very nice bowling. So you can see here, uh, they're 360 runs away with six wickets. They were shambles in their first innings as well. You expect England to be thinking where well, this is just going to be, you know, pedestrian. Inside edge and a terrific catch. Good movement. Stephen Fleming, that's the big wicket for England. He's gone for 48. Foster is England's wicketkeeper. I don't remember him. Must have only played a few test matches. There you go. Oh, Craig McMillan. I love some of his innings. I think he always he, there was something about Craig McMillan uh, nicely guided there's two players of uh, New Zealand who I've just kind of felt had a bit of attitude and you know, there's something feisty to watch one was Craig McMillan and the other was Jesse Ryder I really wish New Zealand um, just stuck with Jesse Ryder more than they did he dropped that well it's gone down yeah so I mean that's just a shambles that's a piss easy catch thank god he did catch it sorry drop it but yeah there was a lot of drop catches in this uh, match so graham thorpe who got his double century in the third innings he was dropped on four funnily by astle i mean he had no chance really did no that did come to him quite quickly didn't it he would have sensed the ball rather than seeing it yeah that's that's a bit harsh to call that a drop in yeah. there again but uh, smashed past mid off for four Stand and deliver. Billy Bowden. Oh, that's a way for four as well. That is beautiful, is isn't it? Straight, over the right straight on his toes, swung across the line, and he's middle that so well, and he's not kept it down. He's just cracked it. That's a flat six. Yeah, I was quickly speaking about Billy Bowden. A lot of people like Billy Bowden because he used to do his hook finger and stuff like that. I don't know, Welcome man. There. there was just something about yeah, Billy Bowden. And I just thought he was. Yeah, he's all right, I guess. I'm just not a big fan. That'll Beautiful. The 50 partnership in very fine style indeed. I don't care how many times back. you watch a batsman skip down the track to a spinner and loft him straight over the head. It still always has something so um, watchworthy. Can't think of a better word. He got him. Caddick has big ears, doesn't he? England on the road to victory. And Andy Caddick holds on. You know, I was um, I was a big fan of Crick Info, and I was listening to one of the podcasts where there was a discussion going on uh, what team of the two thousand, what rest of the world 
team of the 2000s which you which you compile if you had to take on Australia so obviously you can't pick any Australians but you can pick anyone during that era you know during their peak until about I don't know 2005 2006 something like that and uh, they put they picked Andy Caddick Ooh. probably for balls like that yeah and they kind of you know it was <laughs> they said it was just you know he had Andy Caddick on his day, he just, he really could blow away the opposition. Let's have a little look at this one. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> That's been given. That, that ball has done nothing. That's just been inside edged. But yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, Caddick, I mean, uh, yeah. A lot of people forget Caddick. Caddick was good. He wasn't great. He wasn't consistent. Oh look, a nice blast from the past. Nostalgia, some adverts. Oh, and we're back. Boom. Caddick. Has he got it? Oh, you betcha. You betcha. Ashley Giles, world's greatest spinner. Clip through mid-wicket. Well, that's timed very nicely, isn't it? Beautifully timed and set. And that is 3,000 test match runs for Nathan Astle. Significant landmark for him. Ready. Shot. Nicely played again. That flashes away. Seen plenty of boundaries in this match. You know, match full of we had a... I cannot remember. I think someone was... In the second innings, anyway, I want. I was thinking about a uh, all-time New Zealand game. Test eleven, and I was wondering who would you put as their spinner. Now, a lot of people are going to point to Daniel Vittori, right? He's got was it a few hundred uh, Test wickets. He's a decent low-order batsman, sort of like a bowling all-rounder. What would you really want your all time, you know, your spinner for your all time 11 to be Daniel Vittori. Quite guided with that, isn't it? There's a country that can't produce a spinner. Oh dear, oh dear. There you go. The only thing like highlights don't do is they don't give, um, what's the word? It's because you can't see the dot balls in the middle. It just seems like, you know, you're always going to see fours and sixes. But get ready for this now, okay? So he's reached his 100, he's reached in about 120 balls or whatever. 114 balls, okay? That's a fucking great strike rate. This is 2002, I mean, it's brilliant right now if you score 100 of 114. Now, let's see what happens. Uh, it's been a wonderful innings. Brilliant, in fact. It's going to be in a lost cause and they perhaps never feel quite as good. Well, he's just beaten by a good bouncer there, hasn't he? And we'll see the reaction from Nathan Ashtall. He won't believe that uh, Craig White missed this. Don't play, don't <laughs> play any hook shots like that at the textbook. Now, shall we talk about the other aspect Do of it? Do you even have his eyes on the ball? Perhaps not. Wonderful fielding. This entire test match was full of shambolic fielding. I hope he makes the 11 in Wellington. He might not be the 12th man. Bintoff Lovely shot. He to test the middle of the pitch and continues to go for boundaries. 300 comes up for New Zealand. Well, they're still in there fighting. 250 needed for boundaries. I heard the commentators were. They're still in there fighting. There you go. He's gone. Seven down. So three more wickets with 250 runs to get. Yes, Astell is playing a blinder. You're not going to be concerned. Though, are you? And don't forget as well. Astell, yeah, everyone knew he was a good hitter. But Astell isn't the kind of guy you expect to make too many runs. You just expect he, you expect him to get out at any time. Drag it away and not getting the timing. That's uh, the value of having a tall man with good hands at mid wicket. Story goes for 12, and New Zealand are 300 for 7. Oof. Has he got him? Out. What the hell kind of shot was that? 
was he not ready? I want to see that. I would like to see a replay of that. That looked quite, you know, first time holding a bat. That was rubbish. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, he's just being for pace, isn't he? Just being, just typical tail end of dismissal. And Flintoff was good at cleaning up the tail. Great ball to a crap batsman. There you go. Good. Two wickets on victory. Oof. That sounded good. It's a beautiful shot. This is 18 fours at this stage. Let's have a look at that. Oh, he's, he's actually got left of the ball. So now what he's done is taken away any risk of him getting hit from the body, which essentially makes you... It frees you up. You're not going to get hit in any way, so you can just play the shot. Ooh. Look at that. He swung that a mile, hasn't he? But that is, don't get me wrong, that's wide. That's a wide ball. That's asking to be hit, but hey, you still got to hit him. Oh. Oh. That's not a test match shot, is it? Especially not 2002 test match shot. I mean, yeah, again, I keep saying this as well. I don't, I don't want to take away from this test, uh, this innings, because, I mean, truth is, if you want to be a real critic, would he have, would he have been able to play the, uh, innings like this when you actually have a shot at victory, or you feel you have a shot at victory? It's much harder to play a shot, uh, play an innings like that. But he still played it, man. Whoa! Look at that, man. You, you know, there's something. You know when, it's do, when you've got a fast bowler and the batsman just hits through and he just hits it like a bullet and he doesn't move. It's glorious. When you're in this situation, it's actually uh, you can have a lot of fun for a short period of time. No, <laughs> no mercy, no holding back, no half measures. Sort of splice that a little. But you know, at this stage, England know what's going on. There you go. There's a ninth. So one wicket away now. Coming in is Chris Cairns. Now I have no idea where he's coming in at number 11 because Chris Kins is not a number 11. I assume he must have injured some part of him and is forced to come 11. So keep in mind as well, yeah. So this is going to be a very nice ball, by the way. But So this is going to be quite a cracker of a partnership now. But it's not with a proper number 11. Not that it takes away. I mean, it's all Aston still. Oh, look at that! Again, that's gone many, many a mile. Jesus Christ, man! Way back Dancing down the track <laughs> to a pacer on a track which is moving. Look at this! Joins in with a thumping, uh, drive down it's breathtaking. For six. It's, uh, beginning to, uh, One thing you want to—oh, that's Chris Cairns, by the no way. One thing you want to remember, by the way is uh, England only have four bowlers. One who is Ashley Giles and is rubbish. So you've got three guys who just basically have to share the bulk of the overs. And someone's all, you've always got to have a pacer on. So they will have, they did tire through this. But you know, England went with the uh, batsman heavy approach. And uh, that's why so many test uh, teams, you know, when they're serious about winning, they're saying, hey man, you've got to have five bowlers. They still want it with four though. Three and a half if you wanna if you wanna be you know four is generous, three and a half with Giles. Look at that. Lost his shape completely. Little bit of luck. Yeah. Fortune favours the bold.
that's uh, flown away and hit the You're going to swing, swing hard. That's outrageous. It's going to be six more. That is. Could get 12 for that. That is huge. That has gone miles. That is huge. And now what we're seeing is why Graham Thorpe said, I've never seen the ball hit so cleanly. Everybody applauding it. Yeah, That's damn big, right, big right? Hit. Oh, there you go. It's down the ground. That's, That's a, a gimme. I don't think it'll go for four. I think, think it, it will. will. It's gone for four. It's not at the middle of the bat, but uh, races away. 376 for nine. <sighs> He's skipping down like it's nothing, you know? Just skipping down. That that is a ridiculous six. He skipped down. He's also sort of kind of moved slightly to the uh, leg side because he wants to give him some space. And he's flat batted that. Yep, yeah, he's flat batted that over cover. Just think how difficult that is. It is outrageous. It's mental, isn't it? Look at... This is amazing stuff. It's another six as well. Yeah. Commentator is saying this is amazing stuff. It is amazing stuff. It is. It is like nothing you've ever seen. And I was um, how old was I when this was um, when this match came out? Where all this match happened, two thousand two. So I was about fifteen. And you, I cannot tell you. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Oh, he knows it. Oh, what was I saying? Oh. By the way, so I have not seen this innings in years, probably over, over a decade. So whenever I do these videos as well, it's like, while I may set them up to a for like one shot at the start of the video I haven't seen the rest I had a very good point what was my very good point oh come one second yep look at this can you see I mean you see the title of this video I've called it probably the most entertaining test knock ever it is it's mental and it's it's probably still the most entertaining test match knock. Don't forget, this was in 2002. When this happened, and you know, watching the highlights, fantastic 200, by the way. Lift your arms, in winner. Um, when in 2002, you know, I watch this as highlights because I'm using them as like, the, you know, it's the middle of the night when this starts. But when I saw the highlights, it's before the days of kind of like, I don't think I had the internet in 2002, did I? I might have actually I don't know but I didn't know what had happened I had I had didn't used to check teletext back then because I wanted to watch the highlights what a shot what a shot that's how high is that climbed and he's still gone through it that must have been around his forehead level oh come on man. show like a replay of that I mean, what's wrong with him so Nasser Hussain at this stage said he started for the first time feeling the nerves he's like is this actually happening and there carries on on his merry way that's another six 20 rows back it's his 11 six under three figures it's crazy now it is it is a crazy 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 innings you gotta, you gotta understand what it's like you know like 100 runs in test match even now you expect you know how quick can they really do it um, you kind of expect in a normal situation, hey, if you feel like you're in trouble, are they going to get there in 30 overs normally? You know, if they get there in 30 overs, 100 runs, that's not bad. That's quite a decent pace. 25, now you're going fast. But with him playing like he's playing, 
You're concerned this if this carries on for another 15 overs, this game could be over. So you start to feel nervous and you got to understand as well, at this stage the bowlers, they just felt clueless and they, they've, uh, Duncan Fletcher who was the coach, he's like, well, I, I don't know what the fuck they were bowling, they were just like, they didn't know what to bowl. Now I'm guessing yeah, that's the one. Look at that reaction. When you set someone f 550 to win, you do not react like that. I mean, I know win is special and it's an overseas win. But it's because, because Nathan Astle scared the living dog shit into them. Because it's, it's a phenomenal innings. It wasn't, it didn't lead to a victory. And actually, funny enough, you know, um, another innings which I... Uh, you know, did a similar video on was Sangakara's. Um, I don't know why this is on. I'll let it run whilst I talk anyway. Um, yeah, Sangakara. I did a video on Sangakara's 192 against Australia, and uh, so that was another cracking innings. You know, like in fourth innings, chasing a score which surely isn't going to be chased, and he didn't do it. Now, one guy uh, comment on that video, and I said it's a fantastic innings. I said it's one of the greatest innings by a. Uh, visiting batsmen in the fourth innings in Australia ever I and mean, you can take away the fourth Don't innings as well there. and the and one the one of the guys who watched the video comments this is not a great innings you know uh, you can't call it a great innings unless it's a win now you know I mean I don't really need to make the point but the guy's a complete retard he probably does not understand cricket at all he just probably watches his team he's got like a few favorite batsmen once they get out he switches off the TV if you ask him about a, you know ask him about a pretty, you know like a big famous batsman or bowler from like 10 years ago or you know depending on how old he is he won't know it so some people honestly man i know i sound like a cricket snob they are retards okay um i'll leave that there let's pause that okay so there you go man that's what it was that's what made it goes um yeah look cheers guys i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you kind of find it unique in some way um, yeah man, if you'd like to help my channel grow, um, I hadn't done videos for a long time until recently, obviously some people were watching it, I got some comments and I really appreciate that man. So if you could help me get my uh, get my channel out there if you enjoyed this video, you know, like it man, it really does help, write a comment, subscribe, these things, I mean like subscribe, obviously you can subscribe, if you don't like it don't subscribe, but if you like this video please do just uh, click the like button and a comment button. Because YouTube has an algorithm. If you actually click, if you click like and comment, you know your videos are more likely to be seen by others. So that'll be awesome. Subscribe, obviously, if you want to see more of my videos. I'm quite erratic with my uploads. Often, if I upload, you know, um, people miss it. And on top of that, because I'm using footage from elsewhere, every now and again, my footage, you know, my videos get removed. So there's actually probably actually. A probably a legit reason if you do want to subscribe you might actually, the video might disappear in future and finally number four man please do share man uh you know facebook reddit twitter i don't know what other social media thing is is that tiktok a stupid six second crap i don't understand that whatever man if you like it share it uh, i'd really appreciate it um apart from that is there anything else i need to say no not really uh yeah cheers cool catch you soon